So last time, there was actually an entire leaked listing that I missed that would have made the whole one I was reading make way more sense. Like, apparently there's going to be a new Windblade, and that would mean that Slipstream will probably be a retool of her. Whoops. Also, I'm down to 400 subscribers in the last month. I miss one upload, and my growth gets cut in half, and all my videos start doing worse as well. The YouTube robot is a mean son of a bitch. Anyways, help me out with your likes. Please give. And if you enjoy this video by the end and you aren't subscribed already, please consider it. Anyways, let's talk about some mini bots. It's 86 Brawn and Legacy Beachcomber. Insert obvious unfunny joke about Brawn being in the 86 movie for like five seconds of screen time where he dies here. First up, I want to say that everyone has had the right to be terrified that this guy's knees would only bend like this much. Because for some unknowable reason, all of Hasbro's official product photography only has them at like a 20 degree angle. And he still don't bend a full 90, but rest easy. It's a ton more than Hasbro was trying to convince you it was for some reason. Anyways, 86 Braun is a figure of great dichotomies. On the one hand, I don't know why this is so satisfying, but I'm so happy though. As a little kid, I loved Braun. Like, more than the average Autobot. Grew up and I kind of forgot about it. He became a joke to me. Rufus, the goofy looking one with bad hair. And now I have this little totem of the dude, and my collection feels more complete in a way that I haven't felt in a while. It looks so much like him. And on the other hand, there are a lot of visual issues with this thing. Just to begin with, it feels really wrong that the plate behind his head is so flat. Like this needs to be most of the width of his head. And I get what an incredible nitpick that must sound like. And I want you to understand, it doesn't make the figure bad, it just feels wrong. It's carrying the wrong energy. And really, that's where most of my quibbles are going to be. Not in the figure's quality, because this is a very good figure, but just in the way that it feels like it's not capturing him like it should be. For instance, I have nothing negative to say about this section from the direct front. However, Bronze arms here are too skinny. This boy was the beefiest manlet in all the Transformers. What's he doing with these little pipe cleaners? They're also mounted low and behind his head. You can budge these forward, but now they're pressed out by the geometry a little, and they're even lower. So while they fix how far forward they are, they only make him look weirder and more awkward from the front. The backpack is really clunky. It doesn't feel like it's part of him, more like it's an actual camping backpack he's wearing, which Braun uniquely shouldn't be doing. And this is one of the more unstable figures to come out recently because of the feet. QC is for the most part very good, but his heels tilt up too easily, so this guy falls over a lot more than he should. And with that, that's pretty much every bad thing I have to say about this figure. The rest is all joy and good times, at least in robot mode. I love that everyone seems to agree, including third party, that Titan's Return Cup's legs are the perfect way to handle Bronze knee down going forward. Though here they don't result in it looking a lot like his actual feet. And this thing is painted to the nines. This is what I expect a lot of people were thinking they were seeing with Cliff Jumpy ER, where it was like, yeah, the figure may be smaller, but they spent the same on it. That was always a lie. But this actually looks like they spent the full deluxe budget on it, with the fully painted torso, arms, backplate, windows, and head, made out of heavier materials and with better articulation. This is a minibot that feels worth the money, and so much of the character bleeds through, I love it. Though because this is part of 86, I find myself wishing that this had a lot more pegs and ports. Like his roof wheel comes off, why can't I use this as a shield? I say that having endlessly mocked Cliff Jumper about using a glass shield. The head rocks. It makes my soul sing. Braun has the dorkiest, goofiest, ugliest head in all the Transformers, with his stupid Dutch boy haircut, but it is his head. No one else looks even a little like him, and this couldn't succeed more in being his ugly mug. Maybe it doesn't look like a G1 toy, but this has so much character, and painted eyes. Ah, <sighs> so much better than shitty light piping. And this boy should really have a blast effect peg in the top of his collarbone, even if that would traumatize us all. For those of us who's like, it's dumb that Braun died by getting shot through the shoulder. He didn't get shot through the shoulder, he got shot through his everything. You get shot in the top of the shoulder and have it come out your lower back and we'll see how well you do. As for accessories, he kind of has his tire, no good place to put this, and he has a little pea shooter that can mount on top of the tire or where the tire went. No drill though, for shame. Gun's nice enough, happy to get it, it feels very classic G1, I don't know why they bothered with the tire coming off though. Posability is decent, head only swivels, shoulders pull like a 92, you can untransform it for backwards butterfly, pretty close to maximum elbows, narcissorists, the worst fake ab crunch of all time, legs are completely unimpeded forward and to the side and very impeded going back, though you can untransform him to get a lot more. Knees pull a smidge less than a 90, and feet with some toe down, heel down, and a serious rocker. So this guy can do most of what you want a brawn to do. Normally when a head can only swivel, it feels like a pretty bad bummer, but on brawn, it feels kind of right given the shape of his haircut. I of course would love more at the knees, but I've seen much worse multiple times recently. And then the transformation is almost so good. I almost absolutely love this. It's weird. It's doing things you've never seen another figure do. It's clever. It's interesting. It's fun all the way up until the very end where it develops a horrible degree of Play-Doh factor. In order to do the final step of this transformation, you basically just have to mush on him until he's done, and it completely robs the satisfaction of this thing. Plus, sometimes it just doesn't want to go! 
all the way up to that point, it's a 10 out of 10. After that point, 6 out of 10, if I'm being generous. And then the alt mode is pretty good. It's very knobbly, there are a lot of visible hinges and seams, but especially with the painted windows, this feels like it jumped right out of the cartoon. This, despite its clear nature as a toy, has the vibe of the character more than even the robot mode does, which at least in the torso and head was already doing a fairly good job. So I'm just like, yeah, this is what I wanted, yeah. The peg tires don't look too bad, at least they're painted, and this thing rolls really well. Now for Beachcomber. This is the same thing. This is worse. Now you may be like, how can you say that a modern deluxe is worse than a Legends figure from Power of the Fucking Primes, and also the same thing? And my response is, look at him. Do I need to say more? Incredibly, the Power of the Primes figure at half the size and less than half the budget has more paint. All that's painted on the new figure is the wheel rims, the spot on the shins, the visor, and the chest details. Meanwhile, on the Power of the Primes figure, the entire torso is painted. The chest is actually black plastic and the back is blue, so all the gray you see is paint. But he also has the large auto badge on his shins, and the wheel rims are painted just like the bigger figure. Plus, the visor, and as a kicker, the hands are too. Yes, the proportions on this guy are a little wonky with the short legs and hefty torso, but you may like that aesthetically, and they very easily could have fixed those with minor re-sculpting. Now, I have to hand it to the Legacy figure. It's very accurate to the show model, more so than the POTP, which is what most people probably want. But my question to you is, does it look enough more accurate to justify how much worse this thing is, while at the same time being so much more expensive? The Legends figure was 10 bucks, yet it's more than half the size of this, which cost 25. The Legends figure has more paint. To be fair, they both feel about as quality as each other. The head sculpts are insanely similar. If I just took both of the heads off the necks, I sincerely doubt that you could guess which one goes with which figure without it being luck or just having the two next to each other so you could see which one was bigger. The Legends figure so far has the paint and the price. And what's this got? Accessories? And I got screwed on that, so get ready. The Legends figure gets nothing. Absolutely nothing! The Legacy figure gets his gun, which looks extremely goofy. It's supposed to double as his car bumper, but we'll get to that. And then he comes with Bird. Unless you're me, apparently. I didn't get Bird. Or I did, and I immediately inhaled the fucker. I want my Bird. That's right, I just referenced the second Iron Man movie. I love how all the way up to Endgame, people were like, there's never been a bad Marvel movie. Fuck you! Iron Man 2 sucks! All the 2 suck! Avengers 2 sucks, so does Thor 2, so does Captain America 2. Fucking fight me! Anyways, yes, I didn't get Bird. I want Bird. Where is Bird? You're telling me I paid this much for this thing and I don't even get Bird? What is this? So accessories would have been decent if I had Bird. The gun sucks, I don't want it, but the Bird, which is the only thing this guy needs, no. That's gone. Fuck you, Hasbro. I want another bird. And a deer. And all manner of woodland creature. Give them to me. Then you get to the posing, and somehow the old figure is better. On the Legacy, Head has a tiny amount down and some extremely limited swivel. Interjection from the future! It turns out the Head can do a full swivel, it's just that there's a part that it is incredibly good at getting caught on and preventing further movement. On the Power of the Primes, the Head only swivels, but it's a ton more. Shoulders pull significantly less than 90 degrees on the Legacy, shoulders pull a 90 on the Power of the Primes. A bit over 90 degree elbows, a bit more over 90 degree elbows. Interjection from the future! I was just wrong about this. I think from the other side of the arm, it just looks like it's more because of the way the tire mounts. Wrists that you can barely rotate because they're blocked up by the arm armor, so it's a pain in the ass, but you can get some rotation. No wrists, waist, no waist, legs are unimpeded in all directions, legs are unimpeded in all directions. 90 knees that you can cheat in a really ugly way to get a maximum. Knees that just go maximum. Ankle pivot and heel down. Only a heel down on the Legends figure. So yes, the Legacy has more types of joints, but the more types of joints it has tend to have extraordinarily limited range, like the wrists and head. Interjection from the Future 3, I was wrong about that. And the types of joints that they share, the Legends figure just does better. And then you get to the transformation, and once again, these are the same figure, and once again, this is worse. No joke, these have the exact same transformation, with the only difference being that the Legends one is actually fun and doesn't need parts forming to look complete. Plus, it doesn't have a set of pegs on the arm that make the transformation ball cancer. Seriously, there is nothing to this transformation, and I dread doing it because the way the arms peg everything together is such a brutal faff. You have to line up everything just right, you have to force things to move, you have to bend plastic, and it feels like you're gonna break the damn thing every time. And for what? So you can do the exact same process as the Power of the Primes one, but wind up with a less cohesive alt mode? One of these looks more like an actual thing than the other, and it's the one that costs less than half as much and has more functionality, because you can have a Headmaster drive it. The bumper on the new figure looks terrible, it's this misshapen asymmetrical mess, and without it, it's just a crime. Then from the top or bottom, you can see it's basically nothing but gaps in a really unnatural way. Let your leg hang down while driving and you will get sucked under. Based on the seating, this thing isn't some beach buggy, it's the size of a monster truck. The diamond plating doesn't stop, it just ends. They didn't do anything to cover up the head hole on the back, which was excusable on a $10 figure, not here. And most hilariously of all, you can't see out of this thing. You'd have to be driving around like Ace Ventura because this is not a windshield. 
There are gauges and dials coming out of here. The steering wheel's in it. You got like one inch between the head bar and the console to see where you're going. Tires are real rubber, so there it is. That's where our money went. Fuck you. And it rolls really good, but the noises it makes sounds like the wailings of hell. So one of these is great. The Braun has its problems, but I still love it. It poses pretty good, it looks the part, it transforms well, but it could have been amazing if it weren't for the last step. But going into robot mode, at least it doesn't suffer that, so going that direction, it's really fun. The alt mode feels great, and it has the vibe. And of the two figures, it's also the better rolling one. The Beachcomber, on the other hand, also isn't a bad figure. I realize how negative all of this would have sounded up until now, but it's literally just because I'm comparing it against a figure that there should be no comparison to. This should stand head and shoulders above the Power of the Primes, and it just doesn't. I am unconflicted about how much I like the Power of the Primes. I am very conflicted about how much I like this thing. It poses decently, it feels pretty good, it looks pretty good. If you get Bird, you are a more happy camper than I. But the transformation is bad, when it shouldn't be considering it's literally the exact same thing as the Legends figure, just with flaps on the backs of the shins to hide the gaps, which isn't the bad part, and then some pegs coming off the fist that fuck with it. And then the alt mode is tolerable, it kind of feels like the character, but like squashed and stretched in ways that should not be. An eldritch buggy, if you would. And it just doesn't look finished without the bumper. The long and short of it is, it's fine, it's okay, but if you have the POTP figure, you don't need it. Maybe you want it for it just being that bit bigger, and fitting a modern Chug collection a slight amount more, and sure, it will do that, but you will be like, man, this should have been better. And it really should have been. The power of the primes isn't even that big of a deal to try and top. And that's not half what I have to say, but it's enough what I have to say. And I know, you know, what everyone else tells you to do at the end of these videos. So, if you liked what you saw here, please do that. And if you'd like to take it a step further, then please, share this video with any friend you think may be interested. I hope you all enjoyed listening to me waste your time.